Now, Rwanda has been looking to create 100,000 off-farm jobs by 2020 under the Smart Rwanda Master Plan. Now, what is the likelihood to achieve this? As 2018 comes to a close, Rwanda's Minister of Information and Communications Technology and Innovation, Paula Ngavile, joins us right now to share progress on these ambitious plans and more. Thank you very much for creating time to speak to us, Paula. Thank you for having me here. It's rather a very big time that uh, we have you. But of course, we understand that one of the government's priorities area in line with uh, bid to become the region's, I, uh, rather, the uh, knowledge economy best and uh, uh, ICT hub for the region is, of course, uh, mainly on the back of uh, the information and communication technologies here. But talk to us about a little bit into the budgets and uh, programs that the government has put up to see that we stay on track with this particular conversation and, uh, 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 you know, a step closer to the ambitions. So um, I'll start off by looking at um, the guiding policy and strategy that mm. the ICT sector uh, uses, and this is a smart Rwanda master plan that is well aligned with the... Uh, uh, the Vision 2020 that is well aligned with uh, the National Strategy for Transformation. And so what we've done with Smart Rwanda is to carve out some of the um, interventions that we need to put in place jointly between the government and the private sector. And when you look at the budget today, a lot of it is, a big chunk of it is really um, focused uh, on really um, building the last mile kind of like infrastructure solutions, whether we're looking at cybersecurity, whether we're looking at the typical uh, infrastructure that is required to drive uh, digital literacy, but also to drive services closer to the citizens. Um, and, and in some of these initiatives, what we've been seeing is, um, you know, putting in place, uh, we now have Irembo, uh, the, the online government platform through which all government services are provided, but we know that that's not enough just to put the services online. How else can we make it uh, closer to the citizens? And so some of it has been around how do we uh, put in place service access points closer to the citizens as part of the Irembo agents or part of, uh, we have what we call the Rwanda Telecenter Network, uh, mm -hmm. that is a network of um, uh, telecenter service providers across the country. They have about 3,000 telecenter, uh, uh, telecenters across the country. And government has really focused on, if you look at the grassroots level, at the sector level, that's where most of the citizens will go for services. How do we digitize, um, you know, the process of, you know, w when you walk in as a citizen, as opposed to receiving the services in a manual process, how do we then equip these um, government offices that are at the grassroots level to be able to provide services leveraging this uh, online platform. Another chunk of the budget, of course, is um, around uh, digital literacy. Okay. We understand that for us to be able uh, to build capabilities in country, both for the population but also for the industry, we need to grow our digital literacy levels beyond what they are today. And so there's a number of interventions that we have that are part of the strategy, that are part of the work that we are doing, but they're also embedded in some of the initiatives and the investments that we attract into the country to say how are some of these initiatives coming in to really bridge these digital literacy levels that we see that are really, really low, especially when you look at um, uh, the rural communities. Um, when I talked about infrastructure, I think I left out one critical point, which is really at the end of the day when we have um, the, the, the you know, connectivity infrastructure, when we are trying to put all the information online and services online, what is key and important for us is to build trust that all citizens right. are you know, transacting online. And mm -hmm. so we, we are heavily investing in really making sure we have robust cybersecurity infrastructure Minister, to protect. Minister, you've uh, spoken about uh, Irembo, you've spoken about the infrastructure, but I want to drag you just a little bit back to Irembo there. Of course, we've seen uh, now uh, the decentralization and also uh, government uh, programs uh, being uh, very accessible uh, with uh, citizens. But how much has this even made it easier for the business environment to grow in Rwanda? So when you look at Irembo, you're not just looking at um, business to sorry, government to citizen services. You're looking at government to business services as well. And so uh, I think because a lot of the services that are provided by government are usually input into what a citizen needs from the private sector mm -hmm. to get an additional service. Right. Even if, just take a simple ex example of going to the bank, you want a loan, sometimes they're going to ask you for certain services that are heavily dependent on government providing those services and are input into the services you get into the private sector. And I so, so I think in a way of really making it easy 
to provide uh, services even for the business community and making sure that the input process of mm. providing services from the business community makes it very uh, much easier for, uh, for businesses. The other element um, that you'd look at is also beyond the fact that businesses are also looking for services from the government. I mean, if you take an example of what RDB has been doing to register businesses online, I think that has really been a great input into doing business in Rwanda and making it easier, an easier process for them, filing for taxes online. So it's beyond just a rainbow, but also looking at what are some of the other services that the government provides uh, to the private sector that make it easy to do business in Rwanda. Let's jump in with uh, Kigali Innovation City. Of course, you're looking at a two billion uh, sector value there for that particular project. What is the main aim or targets behind it and how do you actualize on that particular one? So the broader vision of the Kigali Innovation City is to strengthen our innovation ecosystem in Rwanda. Mm. Uh, and as much as over the years it's been viewed as a real estate project because right. real estate is a huge component of the Kigali Innovation City, I think for us what is big, and when I say us as government but also as, as Rwanda, is um, beyond the infrastructure, the soft side of building this innovation ecosystem, building human capital uh, capabilities, uh, how do you build companies that are actually able to feed into this innovation ecosystem and put Rwanda on the map. Um, and so we've, what we've done to make it, um, to, to really realize uh, the objective of building an innovation ecosystem is to say, what are the key components that one needs to look at when they talk about building an innovation ecosystem? Leave infrastructure aside, and that is a key component of what we are doing. I mean, if you look, if, if you've been following, we signed an agreement with Africa 50 as, as an early stage developer. Uh, for the Kigali Innovation City and what Africa 50 is doing is to contribute to the project development and, and give some financing uh, towards, you know, uh, really trying to shape the project so that it's a project that can, you can really take to equity and debt financers so that they bring in the money. And so, but that's just real estate. Now, the other component is on um, talent development, because mm. we, we, you could have fancy buildings, but if you don't have these companies that the are in there, that are really build, that are creating these innovative solutions that are addressing challenges that are specific to Rwanda and to the rest of the continent, mm. then you just have massive, you know, elegant infrastructure. And so for us, the biggest focus has been on how do we build uh, this industry? How oh. do we create the critical mass of capabilities within the industry so that you have people who are really, you know, you start to see unicorns coming out of, you know, the, the efforts of building local capabilities. The other element that is crucial to really building uh, these uh, innovation companies, and when I talk about, I want to move away from, I think what we've done for the longest time is focusing on developing small and medium enterprises within the ICT industry. And we're seeing a shift into building innovation-driven enterprises right. whose value proposition is really built on the uniqueness of the solutions and products they bring. But for them to do that, financing is critical. Uh, and when I talk about financing, what you have in Rwanda is still traditional forms of financing. Mm -hmm. We need to start to see innovation-friendly financing that really supports scaling of these ideas up until commercialization. So financing is another segment of the Kigali Innovation City right. that we are focused on. And what we've done is beyond trying to attract venture capital firms to come in here and, and start to see the talent that has been built and, and the capabilities that they can finance, is to say, can government put some skin in the game. Right. Can we set aside a fund in, in, in collaboration with a private uh, fund manager to sort of say, we're seeding this ecosystem, bring your finances, let's support these people. So those three things, real estate, human and uh, industry development, as well as uh, financing are the three components that really make the fabric of the Kigali Innovation City. And, what, and, and that's why you're going to see a lot of interventions, both from the private sector and All from right. the government.